Hi guys, it's Minx here. Hope you're doing well. I am doing great today, thank you. We are playing some more Corpse Party Blood Drive today. Um, I'm actually going to ignore... Mm, I was going to say I was going to ignore the extra chapters, but there actually isn't any extra chapters at the moment, so I guess that's okay. Um, I guess we're just going to continue with... Oh, actually, is there extra chapter? No, we've done all those so far, right? I think. Yeah, we, we've done all those. Anyway, um... Let's jump into uh, chapter 6. I was going to say, I think I'm going to do the extra chapters at the end of the game, rather than interrupting the story, because I feel they're interrupting the flow quite a bit. So, tell me how you feel about that in the comments, and let's go on with chapter 6. This is Book of Shadows. Kishinu is probably looking all over for me by now. Maybe I should head back. Though I really do need to unseal the pillars as soon as I possibly can. I guess we're on pillar duty here with Ayumi... Ayumi Shinazaki. Almost called her Ayumi Magubi. Anyway, let's uh... Onwards with our adventure, I guess. All these fucking tripwires and pick up a shiny. Probably bandages. Yep, yeah, bandages. The most popular item, which I actually had needed that time I was getting absolutely destroyed, so I guess that is definitely a place for them. Although the fact the save points save heal you kind of like does negate the need to a certain degree, I feel. Get rid of this wire. Getting quite good at those. A name tag, what's it say? Committed suicide to escape a red helm. Is that... Who the fuck is red helm? I don't know who any of these people are, or any of these characters are. Uh, where am I gonna go? Oh. Well, I'm glad I went down. Hang on, haven't I checked out the music room already? Didn't I get something from the art room already? That's right. Okay, whatever. The music room's this way. Let's check the music room first. And then we'll go around. What did I pick up? I wasn't even paying attention. What the fuck did I pick up? I was too busy analysing what the fuck I was doing. Oh, fuck. Oh, that guy's still hanging around here. I guess this is Red Helm, by the way. The Argus Cube began reacting to something. Does that mean there's a pillar over here? Probably. I don't know if they can follow me into here. We'll soon find out. This is the music room, right? Looks like they can't follow me here. Looks like having those guys just running around is going to be the norm. Oh, tripwire. So it's not the music room, though. There's no pillar in here. Oh, batteries. That's kind of useful, actually. I don't think we actually got any of those last time, so... You know. We're staying alive. Um, I'm pretty sure we've checked these rooms, so it must be on the floor above. It must be here. Right? Yeah? I mean, it wouldn't make sense. Like, uh... It must be this room up here. Is it this one? Go, 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 go. Yeah, because... I don't know. It must be here. It said it was reacting, so, um... Yeah, there's definitely something in here. Okay, um, in that case, let's go back and save at the entrance. And then we'll come down in here. I know I just saved, but, you know, I want to make sure. 
and everything's okay before I go there. These guys are fucking arseholes. Let's drop a save here. I don't like the fact there's three guys just running around relentlessly here now. You know what I mean? It seems a little bit... A little bit challenging, you know? I don't know. Okay, I got pretty fucked up there. Get in here, get in there. Jesus Christ, I should probably heal myself now. Just as why I picked up those fucking bandages, otherwise I got just fucking get destroyed. Gee, I just saved as well, it's just bullshit. Guess it's that. They hit they pack a fucking punch. I'll die if they hit me again, I just realised. Is there any point if I can heal in next time? I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna have a look around this room. Oh, I have to go through the other doors, don't I? Fuck. This is such horseshit, I'm so dead. <sighs> okay. I got hit again, and now my screen's to be freaking out consistently. Sorry for the blood, guys, but I guess this must be one of the pillars. You should move it. You shouldn't look. Okay. The girl's going to die. Oh, I guess they're watching me. They're talking about me. Should I remove the cloth? I guess. Remove the cloth? I slowly removed the cloth covering the object. What I found underneath it was, by all appearances, just an ordinary mirror. Nothing but my own reflection stared back at me. Phew. What? I didn't even move. Okay, this is creepy. Oh, fuck. I stared into the glass, dumbfounded, as a shadowy figure in black dress appeared right behind me, shrouded in an eerie mist. Sachi! The figure held a hatchet in her right hand and was raising it into the air to strike. Tracing an item. Argus Cube? This is just a gamble. Please work. My reflection, moving independently, held her hand towards the mirror as if to say, Give it here. Half on instinct and half on pure supposition, I motioned like I was handling, handing the Argus Cube to this other me. This is pure chance, guys. Please don't die. Please no wrong end. Suddenly something fell out on my hand onto the floor with substantial clang. I bent down to look closely at it and found it to be a glimmering, a crystal glimmering with purple light. And as with the other pillar crystals, the light was emanating from within the stone itself. There was no mistaking it. Base obtained. I'm probably going to die though now and have to redo this bit, so... It's the mirror pillar which sees through everything. Okay. I glanced back up at the mirror and again as anticipated, Sachi was no longer visible. Only I was reflected. Thank God. Only one more to go. But just then... Oh, I just killed myself. The nearby window began to rattle and groan, and from the corner of my eye I could see several black clothes fly past it outside. When I turned to look I found the number to be well more than expected. It was nothing but crows, as far as the eye can see. Am I dead? I'm probably dead, guys. Oh no. In the very centre of a dark, mostly empty room, I patiently sat on the sofa with my legs crossed. I must have looked like the King of Darkness, with a smug grin on my face and a glass of fine red wine in my hand. My goblet, if you will. It won't be long now before Yumi completes the hexagram. 
I pulled the stone from my pocket. It was the same design as the Argus Cube I'd given to Aimi, though it had a different glow to it. This is no charm, girl. Like Argus with his hundred eyes, I've got you firmly in my sights, Ayumi. It's a wonder you haven't caught on yet. <laughs> this guy's a cunt. He's the biggest of them all. <sighs> now then, I should start making preparations. My Book of Shadows must have a proper receptacle, after all. So he's making a new Book of Shadows and is going to use Ayumi as a catalyst or whatever. So he has his own power play that he is making right now. Yo, Yukes, where the hell are we? Setsuki, don't leave my sight, okay? If you do, we might never be able to see each other again. What? That would blow, Yukes. We're supposed to be best buds forever, right? Yeah! Oh, here comes Dick Brain. Sorry to keep you waiting, Yuka. That was a long PSP break. What were you doing in there, anyway? Why has he brought them here? Uh, where is my big brother? I seem to have lost track of him somewhere. Come on, Yuka, let's go find him together. Okay. God, this guy's a cunt. An absolute fucking piece of shit, isn't he? This guy's totally up to something, Yukes. Don't let your guard down. I won't. This guy's about as trustworthy as the most untrustworthy thing in the history of things being untrustworthy. Big brother, where are you? There was no response to her call. <laughs> Yuxi, it'll be okay. We'll find him. So what is this place anyway, and what kind of crazy trick did you use to get us here? I think we're both out cold for a sec back there. Something just aimed right about this whole situation, I'm getting seriously guilty vibes from you. Sezuki's tone was harsh, though it felt forced enough that I could tell there was some modicum of anxiety behind it. You better not have lured us to the abandoned schoolhouse so you could try and think funny. I've got my eye on you. I just kept my mouth shut. There was no point in saying anything. This person wasn't worth the effort. It behooved me just to keep walking and hope she'd shut up. What a cunt. Anyway, let's go and save. There's a save point just down here, right? Oh, okay. Apparently we can't go in there at the moment. Tetsuki? Has the game crashed? Nope. Oh, this sorry. Just feels like my energy is running out low. You want some yeeks? No, I'm okay. I'm really wondering, where'd you hype all those potato chips? Ah, I've got a bunch of different varieties tucked away under my skirt. My personal recommendation is the Happy Butter flavor. Yuka seemed to be scared out of her gourd when we arrived, but if nothing... Oh my god. If you watch the stream, guys, you know that fucking word. If nothing else, the Satsuki girl's weird behaviour seemed to have broken her out of her shell a little. Oh my god. Now I can hear a drill. I think it was this way. I didn't do her voice, I'm sorry, guys. Oh my god. Chrism is assembling some bookcases at the moment. So yeah, if you hear drills, I apologise. Oh god, from somewhere in the distance we could hear an upbeat, almost carnival s tune playing very loudly. Hmm. The sound of which was accompanied by the crunch of Satsuki's potato chips, which we're still busily chomping away at. Hmm, this sure is something, Yukes. How did you find this place anyway? Um, I've actually been here once before, but huh, something's different now. Hmm? Oh hey, Yukes, you want some more? Oh, you want some? Thanks, Setsuki, but I'm good for now. That music is fucking annoying. Is that gonna literally gonna play the whole fucking time? Fuck. Don't know if I use my talisman. I had a talisman that I found. Anyway, the gym. Fucking gym. There was nothing but a gaping hole in the middle of the gym.
So the detective's not in here. You sure he's anywhere? Where exactly are we again? This little ass munch is really starting to piss me off. Ass munch. I made sure I didn't show my face, but I was not happy with this twerp one bit. Sasuke, this is a place that's haunted by a lot of really scary ghosts. Me and my brother and all his friends were trapped in here once before. What? Ah, you almost had, you almost had me there for a sec. Didn't expect you of all people to start telling scary stories. Just don't leave my side, Sasuke. It's dangerous. Okay. So, this was just a waste of time? Fucking god. Right, where have I- is there anywhere I haven't looked? So guys, I went wandering around the game for two hours. I had to use a guy to realize I had to walk to the fucking hole in here. I had to walk to the fucking hole. Big brother! Oh my god, thank god for that. I've been running around for two hours of game time with that fucking music playing! Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna die! Damn. Damn, this hole goes pretty deep. Isn't this rundown old shit shack like a super dangerous place to be? I bet even a gentle breeze could knock this place to the ground. It's pretty much totaled. Oh, don't you duck in there. She was really trying my patience. I began to position myself behind her very slowly. Big Brother really doesn't seem to be here, Miss Sudo! I can see that. Let's head somewhere else. Okay, well, I guess that... Literally that. I know where I have to go now, because I ended up having to look what the fuck to do, because... Oh my fucking god, and I just... Fuck. <laughs> my glasses just literally fell apart in my hand. I'm not kidding. So now I'm blind, as well as, uh, as uh, playing this video game, uh, after two hours. Two hours! This could have taken me... This chapter's only about 15 minutes long, if you know what you're doing. I'm not kidding, there's like fuck all to do. You seem a little tired. Are you okay, Yuka? Do you want a drink of water? I'm fine. I'll take some. Oh god. Thirsty much? And he finally addresses me. My mum just always telling me to drink a lot of water since there's so much salt in potato chips. Your mum, huh? Do you have good parents? I don't know, it depends on if you think hands off parenting is progressive or lazy. I'd say they're pretty good though. I see. Well, that was completely irrelevant. You want me to throw it away now? You're a dude, you handed it to me. You should be the one to dispose of it when it's done. That's the mark of a true gentleman. Back me up on this, Yeeks. Huh? Well, yeah. You weren't even listening, were you? It's because it's irrelevant! It's because it's fucking irrelevant! My fucking god. Right, so anyway, I found a save point, and it's where we need to go now, is in the direction of that save point. So, we're heading there now. I don't know if we're going to die in the process, but, you know, we might do. But, at least I know where the fuck I'm going from now on. We're going to use some batteries quickly, as we go through the ten minutes of loading screens here. But yeah, that was... I'm not going to lie, that pissed me off a <laughs> lot. Because I didn't approach the hole, it meant the whole rest of the school was dead and empty. Which is kind of bum. What now? What's wrong, Satsuki? I drank way too much water. My bladder is at max now. It's fit to burst. Oh my fucking god. Well, I guess so. that's where we have to go, where the save point is, the toilets. Great. Absolutely fucking great. Oh my god, we've been running around- I've been running around this school for so long today, guys. Fucking hell. On the plus side, though, we haven't actually got a long left until the end of the act. Oh, there could be like fucking loads of cutscenes. I've no idea of the story. Just know that we have to head up this way. And there was only a little smidgen left on the guide I looked at to figure out what the fuck to do. Okay.
here's the toilet, so Satsuki can finally relieve her aching bladder, which is uh, pretty much the entire plot of the game. Now I think about it, actually. So, uh, you know. Is that the girl's bathroom over there? Wait for me a sec. I gotta pee! Okay! Oh, can't hold it. Pee, pee, pee. I don't trust this guy at all. We know he's an arsehole. How'd you know about this place, Masudo? You really want to know? I'm the bearer of the new Book of Shadows, a container for the Nirvana in its core. Or, I will be anyway. Yashigi! Big Brother! That was your brother's voice. You should hurry and catch up with him then. <laughs> well, I guess he's going to kill Satsuki now. Oh, she is so fucking dead. Here, I thought these floodgates were never going to close. Good thing I had some tissues with me. Huh? Hey, this isn't funny. Where you at, Yukes? Big Brother! What? She need to go downstairs? Yukes, hold up! They're so dead. She's so dead anyway. She's disposable as well, you know? Oh, fucking... Oh, shit! So Suki's throat began to convulse. She was no longer able to form words. She could only moan. Blood began flowing up through her esophagus and dribbling down her chin. Gently now. Oh, fuck. Oh my, it seems your jaw's broken. Your neck's not looking very straight either. Such a pitiful thing to happen to someone who's only in middle school. Let's hide that face of yours, shall we? I can't even bear to look at you right now. You're so sickening. This guy is so fucked. A repulsive sight indeed. This is so fucked up! I took the pocket tissues from Suki's hand and placed two sheets over her face. They soaked through the blood with almost immediate, turning practically invisible in the process. Already asleep? No matter how annoying or resistant they were, they're always so quiet and cute when life leaves their bodies and turns them into mere things. Even a piss ant like you will be cute soon enough. Well, Satsuki's dead. Her breathing became more and more erratic as her body rocked with convulsions. The last thing she'd hear before departing this mortal coil would likely be my footfalls as I walked down the stairs away from her. That's fucked! But really kind of cool at the same time, because it's one of the first deaths and we're on chapter 6, so, you know. Okay. Oh, I can't move. Big Brother, where are you? I can't run anymore. Yuka? Big Brother? She's so dead. She is so dead. Masuda! Masuda! Your brother's dead. Why? Sadly, you didn't stand a chance against Zachi's curse. See? Take a look over there. Oh, fuck. On the floor was where I was pointing there was a mass of organic matter. The only identifiable elements running on this clump of meat were a tuft of black hair and the tattered bloody remains of what used to be a white shirt. So he's not dead. That's your brother. No! No, it can't be! I'm sorry I couldn't save him. He was calling your name until the bitter end, too. That's not true! Big Brother's fine! He told me last night! Big Brother! It can't be true! It can't be true! But it is. And on top of that, Satsuki's dead, too. What? I kicked her down the stairs myself. Want to see? Oh, 
Oh, fuck. I kicked her, and when she hit the bottom, her jaw split clean open. Fucking middle school dits was all wheezing and spluttering. <laughs> What the fuck's going on now? Yes, this is it. This is what I've been seeking. Just what I expected from a heavenly host survivor. The spirit aura is off the charts. Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? The reason I brought you here is yes, because I can use you. Satoshi Mochida, your little sister, is mine. Oy. Oh. Now all the remains is... Our little group project, Ayumi. Jesus Christ, things are going to shit pretty quickly here. We're going to play as Ayumi for a little bit, I believe, right now. I wonder where the last pillar is. Well, I, I think I know where it is, so... um, Is that a bell? There were no bells in Heavenly Host before. Could it have something to do with the final pillar? Right. So, here's the two plans. At least I got our health back. Which is really important, because we were fucked. I know exactly what to do here, at least. Need to go in here. Sorry I know what to do here, guys, but like I said, I was really, really stuck. So I thought, you know, I will just cheat to find out exactly why I was going wrong. I don't know how you're meant to find that, by the way, but there you go. Staircase key. Okay. Come on, get rid of that, get rid of that. I think this is the right way. We're going to that spiral staircase we were on before, if you remember. We went up there as the other two. The bell sounds a lot closer now. Is it above me? We haven't saved for fucking ages, but... Whatever. Pretty sure this is it. So we have a long way to climb. This place didn't exist in the last Heavenly Host. Oh yeah, it was Ico and Weird Guy, that the guy that went crazy that are here now, that were here before. I climbed the long winding staircase that snaked its way up the walls of the tower. And I hugged those walls the whole time. The entire central area was wide open, with nothing but a rickety old guardrail between me and a very long fall. As I climbed higher and higher, the Argus Cube's light began to blink more and more intently. It has to be here. Sure is high up, though. Ah! Suddenly the bell toll rang out louder and clearer than before with such intense, unavoidable pain that I was completely frozen in my tracks and instantly in pain. The same sound had been heard multiple times since arriving in the Nirvana, but this was the first time it had been so overbearing. Yeah. Even with my fingers in my ears, my ears continued to pulsate, resonating with the incredible noise. The sound was just too all-encompassing to block out, present even when absent. It hurt my eyes. It hurt. My eardrums are going to burst. I braced myself for the next start, expecting it to end, but it didn't come. And though the ringing never quite left my ears, it did slowly begin to abate, if only slightly. That was really scary. I hope there aren't any more loud sounds. Uh the body of that guy. Body of Yoshikazu Yanagori, and he seems to be crucified as well a stake driven the back of his head. Where would he be here, and who'd have done this to him? Yoshikazu. Did I hear a voice? Was that still the ringing? That was Sachiko! I could have sworn that was unmistakable voice of Sachiko Shinazaki. Oh, I have the key for up here now as well, because I've got the staircase key, right? I've no idea. Stairs could be this tiring.
I guess we go in three. Let's keep going, shall we? Oh, another loading screen? Holy shit, this is fucking a long fucking run up the staircase. Ugh. Oh, a Caesar, yeah. Okay, so... Gah! Megari grabbed the now primal beast like a Caesar by the hair and pinned her down. So she's human to come to the Dark King, a Caesar. Uh, hold still, you little bitch! Grow! How cute. She thinks she can overpower me. Even if we took her back to the real world, though, she'd never be appointed executive officer now. You're a real pain in the ass, you know that? A tall shrine with a bell can be seen from the window. And from its peak, there were six columns of light stretching upwards. Ayumi. Hmm. What the fuck is going on? Did she really gather all of them? Is she out of her fucking mind? I guess she did. At long last, they reached the top, and there it was, the sixth pillar in all its horrifying glory. It looked like some bizarre growth coming down from the roof, completely entirely of long dead corpses. I observed it in horror, mouth agape, as fluttering wind insects scraped up against my air canal. All the corpses' necks had red ceremony-looking markings emblazoned upon them. The sixth and final pillar was the crown, and what a sight it was. So this is the last one. I closed my eyes and reached to try and touch the markings on one of the corpses' necks. What the hell are you doing? Stop! Don't I to take the pillars any more than you already have! You again, huh? Look, just stay out of my way. Stop! Eek! I'll take that. As she screamed, Masuto leaped in front out of nowhere and snatched the water pillar, Crystal Mercy, from Megara's chest, before she had any idea what was happening. Is that all you got, Megari of Martuba? I guess he's about to become a god. Misuda looked on in sick pleasure, sticking his tongue out playfully as Megari plummeted to certain doom. Satisfied, he then turned his attention towards the final pillar, which had just finished unsealing. Oh, Jesus. The light began to shine even brighter. I could only watch stunned and squinting as this new spectacle unfurled before me. What is this? There was a powerful blast of wind, and the pillar crumbled. I'm going to the other pillars had crumbled as well. The entire school rumbled and shook beneath our feet. Oh god, I'm scared. What's happening? Somebody help me! Suddenly the entire Nirvana was blanketed in penetrable darkness. It's as if the whole world, whole place vanished, only to be replaced with an empty void. I guess we're fucked. I could sense that I was crouched on the ground, clutching my forehead. I slowly raised my line of slide up, the faintest hint of a glow catching my attention. Above me I could see the sky, though it was muted, distorted and discoloured as if being filtered through a warped purple veil. It looked like a big aurora borealis. A few moments passed in relative silence, only for the stillness to be broken by a sound echoing from the sky above. It was reminiscent of ice cracking on the surface of a lake. The scene that lay before me was like something out of a dream. Even then, after everything I'd been through, I had a tough time believing it was real. What's happened? Then there was another sound, directly in front of me. I'd best describe it as a mass of metal collapsing to the ground. I turned my head and saw what looked like the piece of limestone with an eerie white glow. This was, I knew, the crystallized power of the final pillar. It's the last crystal. Crown obtained. I picked it up and almost immediately Masudo tossed a stone he'd taken from Megari over to me. Ah! Aimi, take out all the crystals you've gathered. That's a fine greeting after all this time. Formalities are meaningless. Take out the crystals and put them all together. Damn it! 
there was as much, too much at stake for me to dwell on this. But dredgingly as instructed, I took the other crystals out from my pocket and fit them together into a single object. They snapped into place snugly, with one final bright light fused inseparably. The result was more or less a round crystal with a black sheen, reminiscent of a hematite. This, I would learn, was called Kabbalah Dogra, and it was now complete. Wow! So with this statue can be defeated and all my friends resurrected? Nicely done. Misudo flashed me a wry smile, but then... Ayumi! Aiko, you're alright! Ayumi, listen. I need to apologize to you. Her clothes have been burned in several spots, the skin underneath now black with ash or red with blood. What the fuck is going on now? The nurse's office, thank goodness. I wonder if there's anything I can use here to treat burns. What Sachi burned me with was a spirit fire, so water's no good. Fortunately, spirit fire is susceptible to talismans, and I found plenty of those on me. That has to be what saved me. But my skin is pretty scorched. I need to disinfect it at least. Disinfect? I leaned against the wall and smirked in spite of myself. Am I actually trying to survive in here? I have no way home anymore, so what's the point in trying to live any longer than I have to? The invincible intelligence agent, huh? What a joke. I literally just walked right in here without a care in the world, and now look at me. Burned to a crisp. I let myself slide down the wall until I was sitting. Then I stared at the window, defeated and alone. What did I say to her when I left? See you in half a year? No, I don't even know when I'd see her again. No, that's not true. I won't ever see her again. I looked down at the floor and breathed a deep sigh. My fate lies here in the school, huh? Alongside Naho, Sayaka and Harayuki. There's just no fighting it. I brought this on myself. I stood up and placed my head on the infirmary door. Though I'm finally going to continue fighting it anyway, until my final breath. So I guess I'm trying to survive in here, even if it's just for one moment longer. When I opened the door, what I, caught, chill, what I saw chilled me to the core. This was not a school infirmary, this was a clinic from Yoshi's home. What's going on? This isn't Heavenly Host. There was a person sitting at the desk. Her face wasn't visible from the back, but her identity seemed clear. There's no doubt about it, the document I gave to Magari Mizuki is the clinic from Yoshi Shinazaki's estate, so that must be Yoshi herself. The nurse was writing something in presumably her journal, and was so focused on this task that she remained oblivious to everything else around her. Or at least she didn't seem oblivious. If she didn't notice me, or she didn't care, she kept on writing. I was a fool. Right now, since Sachiko swallowed the Nirvana, things are peaceful, but who knows how long that will last. What's going to happen if Sachiko's life ends? I've analysed the anagrams and determined that all the spells written in the book are nothing more than theories. Not a one of them has ever been properly tested. There were no success rates, there's no data of any kind. So why am I only even enough to attempt something so foolish? I would devote everything I have to bl my blood, my soul, to an end that was destined never to succeed in the first place. Destined never to succeed? I'm afraid so. You've been striving towards a hopeless ideal this whole time. And Yoshi Shinazaki herself said all this? That can't be right. You told me I could bring them all back. If I can't, then what was the point? I began to shudder and my voice was going hoarse. Had only made the same mistake twice, gone after a way to undo things only to make things far, far worse? Aiko could see how much this revelation was affecting me and bit her lip. She seemed like she'd finally succumbed to her own conscience. It's the same for me, honestly. I was half in doubt the whole time. Or I guess it would be more accurate to say I never actually believed you'd be able to do it. I'm sorry, I... I led you here to achieve my own goals. You... I just wanted to see my missing friends. I wanted to hear their voices just one last time. This was like a new Aiko. Bearing it all as opposed to hardening her heart like she always had. She wanted friends. And she finally made some. Now all she wanted to do was cherish them. Tears streamed down her cheeks faster than she could react to them. She quickly gave up on wiping them away, electing instead to look down and hide her face in her hands. Aiko. Bravo! Before I even realised it, Masuto had snatched a Kabbalah Dogra from my hand and with calculated precision. What are you doing? Huh. Nice work. Bravo indeed. <laughs> you. Humans can't be brought back to life. The very notion is absurd. Is your pea brain really so full of flowers and rainbows who actually believed you could cheat death? Misudo's condemnation and contempt seemed to have even greater effect on Aiko than me, faced with rack with guilt and sadness. 
I was starting to share her expression, however, as the implications of his actions began to dawn on me. I fell backwards into a sitting position on the ground. The book was always meant to destroy, not create. There's not a single page in it about your true revival. If the book acknowledges you, it grants you great power. That's it! And you? You lost it. You truly are a worthless bitch. However, even garbage like you isn't completely useless. You were crucial to my plan, and you should thank your lucky stars for that. This, this crystallization of the wisdom possessed by the witches, it's everything in, from inside the book you so carelessly lost, Ayumi. Everything! And with it... I shall become a god, I'm guessing. I can create a new book of shadows. Masudo inserted the divinest crystal into the depression in his book. The skin is nothing more than a case, using the manuscript left behind by my grandfather. A sharp tone rang out and the entire area was quickly bathed in contradictory light, black as night yet bright as noonday sun. Yes, yes, yes! At long last the Nirvana. It's spreading! What is that? Take a look! Isn't it spectacular? We're breaking through to reality. The sky would look like a giant gunshot in it, with spider web cracks projecting outward from it. And the gunshot was now growing into a full-on gaping hole. And inside the hole was an upside down view of the real world was clearly visible. It was night time, so everything was a little dark, but it was absolutely identifiably the word we knew the world we knew. And in that world, small black grain-like objects began emanating from the floating orb, clustering like locusts and dancing across the sky. Well, everyone's fucked, aren't they? <sighs> Miss Kwan, look. Through the fissure in the sky, we could see nighttime scenery from the real world. What is that? Don't tell me where. This is a surprise. It seems this place is inside the black sphere we saw hanging over Tokyo. Does that mean Heavenly Host has already appeared in our world? By all appearances, yes. It's a rather terrifying prospect. If the wall that separates the real world and the Ever After were to break and the two should become one. I can't even imagine how this plane would manifest itself. That shrine with the bell is fully lit now. Miss Kwan, Satoshi, Kishinuma, let's go. Yes, let's. What the fuck are they talking about? Alright, come on, Yashiki. Shinazaki, where the hell did you go, damn it? The new Book of Shadows, with it I obtained the full power of the Nirvana, the power to surpass Sachi. Okay, so use it and stop her. Her curse is spreading across the whole world, right? So save everyone. That's the whole reason I gathered these crystals, isn't it? <sighs> Fat chance. I don't give two shits about this world or Satya or any of that. I just needed you so I could make this book. So you were just using me after all? Yeah, fucking duh. I was clenching my fists so hard that my scrawny arms were covering. Try as I might to think up a response, there were just no words for this. All I could do was glare. Go ahead and hate me. You're too late to actually make any difference. You see that hole in the sky? It's the beginning of the end. The Nirvana has finally begun seeping into reality. The whole world will take a downturn now, falling prey to absolute chaos and death. Gonna be fun. Every single person on Earth will go stark raving mad. And it's all thanks to you, Ayumi Shinazaki. Your utter obliviousness has ensured that my wish will be fulfilled. In a way, I suppose that makes you a death goddess, doesn't it? The most tragic and deranged one ever to exist. He's beyond corrupt. With this, I... <laughs> what are you even trying to do here? Destroy the world, I'm guessing. Get revenge, of course. Misudo slowly turned around, revealing a startlingly cold and expressionless face. Yet even if his features had no depth, his eyes shone with an almost cartoonish malevolence. He would quite literally become an embodiment of pure evil. Jesus Christ, this cutscene's going on a fucking long time. 
From a spot in the real world that was clearly visible to us through the fissure in the sky, a large black monolith-like pillar suddenly sprouted out the ground. The Divine's power lust couldn't be sated by this dimension alone, so it would seem. It began spreading there as well. That, my friends, is the Entity Wall. Come on, Nirvana. That's all you got? You can do better than that. And you will, because guess who's in control of you? That's right! I am! He pounded the book, and just like that, another Entity Wall formed. This time it spawned beneath a freeway, puncturing and utterly destroying it, scattering countless cars and bikes everywhere they went as if they were toys. No! What? Ignorant fools. I'll show you my version of justice. The Agora will never die. Stop, please! Ayumi. I was an ass for believing in you. You certainly were. I was keeping track of you through that Argus Cube the whole time. You were like a loyal puppet doing my bidding without even knowing it. The only being capable of crystallizing the power of Nirvana are the inheritors of the Shinazaki bloodline, you see. So I had no choice but to let you do the dirty work in my stead. To think it would go this smoothly, though. It took almost no effort to link the Nirvana in the real world. You lie. You double cross it. You traitor! You told me. You told me I could bring them all back. One like a baby can't save you now. The new Grimoire will be perfect, and you won't have to worry your pretty little head about it anymore, because I'll be releasing you from your duties as a Shinazaki. Understand? This book controls the full power of the Nirvana. And this inheritor of the Book of Shadows' considerable power isn't going to be a Martubus tomb, nor will it be you of Shinazaki lineage. It will be me. I don't care who inherits it, as long as it's not a sick freak like you. Just give me the book. Think about how... about what you're doing... Just give me the book. Think about how what you're doing would make my sis feel. Are you a fucking idiot? Nothing I do is going to make some dead bitch feel a damn thing. Dead bitch. Don't tell me everything you said about Hinoe was a lie too. Masudo flinched slightly. I seemed to have struck a nerve. Though how deeply that nerve ran, I couldn't say. He recovered quickly, but still. What of it? All you need to know is your sister was a dumbass, throwing everything away that she worked for, and even sacrificing her own life to save the likes of you. My tear gland twitched in pain. Every negative emotion came flooding through me at once. I wanted to pounce on this man. I wanted to wring his neck. I wanted him to die. Your usefulness has come to an end for me. Thanks to you, the end of the world is closer than ever. All that's left for you now is to repent your sins and perish. It really is all my fault again. All those deaths were on me. All the suffering, the pain, the fear, it was caused by me. I'll take mercy on you, though, and send you to meet your sister right now. Prepare to die! Ayumi. Oh, fuck. Shinazaki, run! Kishinuma! Seriously, go. This guy's lost it. Ha, huh, you dare speak ill of me? I know that peasant face of yours. Who were you again? Kishinuma, stop. It's too dangerous. Yeah, I know. Just get away from him. But he's probably right... It was my own reckless behaviour that caused all this to happen. It's because I don't think before I act. Suzumoto, Miss Yui, Shinohara, Morishigi, even my sister. It's my fault. All my fault. I wish I'd never been born. Um, hi Sachiko. How you doing? I tried to scream those words, but my voice was so hoarse that they came out almost as a squeak. I crouched down and buried my face in my hands at this point, and in doing so I felt to notice the sudden appearance of none other than Sachiko, red dress and all. Shinazaki, no. This isn't your fault. You're not responsible. You just want everything to be happy. You wanted to see all your friends live well. And who the hell can possibly find fault with that? Being tricked isn't your fault. It's your fault of the person who tricked you. So get this through your thick skull. You did nothing wrong. You are not to blame. Kishinuma. Oh, we're all here. Yoshiki. Class rep. Shinazaki. Huh, sis? Machida. You're all here, but why? <sighs> Misudo ceased trying to wrestle with Kishinuma, instead making a grand sweeping motion with his hand. Kishinuma! Barca needs to learn when to quit. I felt like I was covered in a thin film of snot and tears by this point, but I put on the most intimidating face I could manage and tried to stare Misuto down. He did stop and stare back, though. It certainly wasn't due to intimidation. Hinoe, you failed. You've nothing left of value behind in this world. Stop! What the hell is your problem? You're Satoshi Machida. Huh. In that moment, 
The entire space shook violently, moving every which way beneath our feet. As this occurred, a massive, virtually indescribable object floated into existence behind us. How marvellous is the seventh pillar, the Sephiroth of Knowledge. I made this happen with the power of my Book of Shadows. What in the world? It's over, Oyumi. With this destructive pillar, it won't be just be a simple fissure anymore. The wall between our worlds will break down and reality will fuse with the Nirvana. What's happening to your stomach? There was a light emanating from my stomach, but as soon as I caught a glimpse of it, it disappeared. An illusion? Nice try. Now let's get ready to bring down the wall, shall we? Heavenly Host will crumble too, you know. But you'll make a fine sacrifice, Yumi. As will you, Kwan Niwa. You know me? Of course, you're the famous prodigy, the human who raised standards across the board of medicine, occult studies, and technology. Machida, Nakashima, and Kishinoma all turned their heads and looked once agape at Kwan, jaws agape. The three of them had no knowledge of any of this, so all they could do was stare in disbelief. Unfortunately, due to your immense talents, your parents and sister alike have been inevitably corrupted. Look how well that's worked out for them. That's not true! Now, that I'm a bit bothered that I could locate the Nirvana's core, but no matter. Once the school's been turned to rubble, I'll have all the time in the world to find it. I couldn't locate the Nirvana's core. And then the new Book of Shadows will be complete. Miss Kwan looked down at her Ever After Stones, but the spirit meter she detached to them still wasn't showing a full charge. No good. Grrr. Very nice. Good boy. So I'm going to stop him? What do I do? Uh. Oh shit, that... I hesitated for a moment, torn as to whether I should try and stop Misuto or prioritising lending a hand to Kishinura and my friends. I can't let that happen. I will stop you. Huh? The fuck was that? Stop. You have to stop this. That was the most desperate cry I'd ever heard from Aiko. I. She's fucked. Please don't kill her. Sis has nothing to do with this. I. How pathetic. I. Oh, fuck. Just a bit on screen, a giant hellish beast spawned right before her eyes. On the front of it was an enormous mouth. It made a beeline straight for Aiko and passed right through her body. Something not unlike black smoke coiled around it for a moment. It roared like a dinosaur, twisted its body to and fro, then flew over the guardrail and exited the scene. The only thing left behind was Lyco's body, without a head. Well. <laughs> She's fucked! Holy shit! Holy shit! She remained uptight for a split second, then tumbled lifelessly over the railing and into the pit. One second, guys. Sorry about this. To bits with you, Heavenly Host Elementary. As if on cue, the entire school began to shake violently. So violently, not a single one of us could keep our balance. Ah! Naomi! That was well beyond any other earthquake we'd heard experience at Heavenly Host to date. The shaking eventually died down, but things looked a lot different from when it did. The sky above us was now blood red, with certain sections here and there bursting in black flame. And on that note, farewell to my guinea pigs. Hi, how could this be hap how could this happen? Miss Kwan. The Nirvana, this school, it's going to collapse. Miss Kwan, is there some way back? My ever afterstones aren't fully charged yet. It'll be several hours yet until they are. No. I was slumped over crying my eyes out of this conversation unfolded. Miss Kwan looked at me, however, and saw something else. A girl in a red dress standing directly behind me. Sajiko. You may yet be able to save yourself. What? Please hurry up. Sajiko Shinazaki has possessed you. You should listen to what she has to say. They're just taking forever to do this scene. No. I objected strongly for obvious reasons, but I knew she was right. At least about the possession, I could sense Sajiko behind me. I could see her now too, but of everyone else present, Miss Corbin was the only one the one who could. 
No, Miss Corn, I'm staying with you. Well, I don't mean to be blunt, but if those tears of yours are true, and you do feel some sense of responsibility for what happened here, the only way you can atone is to live on and watch over the future of this world and protect this. If you choose death, even when there's a chance to live, then you're simply giving up. You're running away. No. We don't have time to argue. Go! No! Oh, just fucking go. I was absolutely inconsolable, but Miss Kwan just smiled. She stood behind me and patted Sachiko on the head. Sachiko, responsible for so much pain and torment, who now looks for all the world like a pure, innocent, lost little girl. Reacting to this new stimulus, Sachiko closed one eye and turned her head towards Miss Kwan, a satisfied expression on her face. Please? I'm responsible for so much pain and loss of life, yet only I get to be saved? I had no conscious desire to go along with this, yet it seemed I was, whether I liked it or not. Everything around me began glowing white and my body was lifting off the ground. Be strong! She really was so much like Miss Yui. Below me I could see Machida shielding Nakashima from the falling debris, while staring at me, rapidly ascending body, my rapidly ascending body. Kishinimura stood back up by now and was watching me as well. No, no Machida! Nakashima! Miss Kwan! In an instant, the turbulent fates of Machida, Nakashima, Kishinimura, and Miss Kwan all came to a close. The four of them were distinctly, unmistakably crushed before my eyes. I guess we're going to fix this. Ah! My vision warped, my memories jumbled. Jesus Christ. That was the longest thing ever. And then, there was just the sky. The sky that hung above the real world. Above our world. The black orb was there and it was swelling up bigger and bigger. Almost like a fetus rapidly gestating to turn. It quickly grew too big to be contained and burst open. Strands of black energy shot out in all directions and the entirety of the night sky was dyed in eerie reddish black. The Divana had now broken free of its bonds and it wasted no time pulling the real world into its embrace. And that's the end of that chapter, finally! That was a long-ass cutscene. And, uh... I guess we'll find out... What, uh... What's gonna happen, really, I guess? In the next chapter. So I hope you enjoyed this installment of Corpse Party, guys! If you did, leave a like! And I guess I'll see you really soon. Have a great day, guys! Bye for now.